Hi, I'm Jeff Belandra and welcome to Paranormal Journeys. Today we're coming to you from the town that's too tough to die. We're standing where legends once walked. We're talking about Wyatt Earp, Doc Holliday. We're in a town whose name is as ominous as the many ghostly legends that have sprung up all over town. Welcome to the Old West. Welcome to Tombstone, Arizona. Back in 1877, a prospector named Ed Shefflin left nearby Camp Huachuca looking for riches. His friends told him that he'd find his tombstone before he struck silver. When Shefflin hit a vein of silver, he named his claim Tombstone. A camp and then a town popped up almost overnight. Saloons, houses of ill repute, and hotels sprung up as fast as men could build them to accommodate the influx of miners. At its height, Tombstone boasted over 3,500 licensed prostitutes. The town was often lawless. Only the cunning and strong survived, and by some accounts, some may still be here. This is Big Nose Kate's Saloon, originally the Grand Hotel here in Tombstone. It was built in 1879. Big Nose Kate was actually the first prostitute in town, and she was the girlfriend of Doc Holliday. One of the most famous ghost legends in town, uh, when it was the Grand Hotel downstairs, a man they called the Swamper lived in a little rickety cot in the corner. He took care of the hotel in exchange for room and board, and he had a tunnel down into the mines below town that run all over the place. He'd go looking for silver uh, and basically hid it away. Eventually he was murdered. He's one of the most prominent ghostly legends today. It's believed when you go downstairs in the basement and mention his name, you'll feel his presence. We're in the Birdcage Theater, built in the 1880s. Uh, this was a, a saloon, a brothel, uh, it was a gambling house. It was all the things that, that made Tombstone the Great Wild West. It was the place where there were 26 murders over the period of nine years, uh, stabbings, gunfights, all kinds of other things going on. There's over 140 bullet holes in the ceiling from all the wild times that happened in here, where cabarets took place up on that stage. Gambling, fights, drinking, this is the Wild West. How do we investigate a small area like this? Let's talk about the word investigate. That means to actually seek out and look for all possible explanations. You need right. to first know what people have experienced here. Otherwise, what you're doing is sitting around and having an experience, which is perfectly okay. Right. But it's not an investigation. Right. Fair enough. And uh, do you think equipment's necessary? Is it just human senses? Well, equipment can help give you back up to the human senses, to the human experience. It gives correlations to something in the environment that people are picking up. It's a way of saying, look, you know, these people aren't crazy. There's something actually here. Right. We can't determine from the readings what that is. But bringing both together, the human experience and the other, is the most important thing. Right on. James Kelly, an investigator with Arizona Paranormal Investigations, was in the lower section of the Birdcage Theater December 27, 2007, collecting EVP with his digital voice recorder. This is what he captured. How many soil nubs live here? On November 11, 2005, Daniel Baker and his wife were visiting the Birdcage Theater. Near the back of the museum, he snapped a picture of the famous Black Mariah Hearse, the wagon used to bring Tombstone Dead to the famous Boot Hill Cemetery. Notice the face that appeared in the reflection. Uh, Leroy, can we start at the beginning? How, how long have you worked here? 18 years. 18 years? And, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful historic museum now. It's uh, it is, yeah. so much history here. Uh, when did you first hear about it? Well, I came here uh, in 1991. KOA campgrounds. Oh, okay. Uh, sent me here to work. We had, there was a KOA campground here at that time. It's no longer a KOA. They sent me here, and I was traveling around the country at that time for KOAs, and I, I uh, just decided to stay. I like Tombstone, so I've been here ever since. Yeah, and, and given all the history here, I mean, you've heard of the haunted reputation, of course. Of course, yeah. Uh, have you ever experienced something? I have had a lot of experiences right here in this building. Right. And, and uh, in the guest home behind this building, but uh, uh, I've never seen 
the ghosts here inside like the taps did. But, uh, there's a lot of experiences. They're here. Definitely yeah. Here. And who do you I think it totally is? I was totally non-believer when I first came here, but this building's made of me a believer. Yeah. And who do you think is here? Well, there's, like I said, 26 men that were killed here in this building. It's probably their spirits that are still here. It was such a, a fast, violent, rough town that people came here from the East Coast in the Civil War era and, and got killed here. They had nowhere, nowhere to go, so they're still here. Yeah, there's something in the air in Tombstone. This was the Wild West. This is where fortunes were won and lost. This is where legends once walked. Uh, an amazing place. One of the reasons we think a location may be haunted is because some event took place that left a mark there that can never be washed away. Something that we still pick up on today. That's definitely the case here in Tombstone. Between the Birdcage Theater, Big Nose Cates, walking up and down Allen's, you're stepping back into history. And it's a place worth checking out for yourself. For Paranormal Journeys, I'm Jeff Belanger.